What's going on everyone? It's Gendo here and welcome back to the FM Scout YouTube page where today's experiment is going to highlight a real life new manager hiring. We're going to take a look at how Peter Boge will get on as Dortmund manager. And before we get started with the experiment, I'd like to quickly direct you over to my page, Gendo FM, where I'm currently running an athletic Bilbao save, trying to get the Basque boys to both domestic and international glory. If that interests you at all, please go and check it out after the video. So the start of this experiment is taking place on the 1st of July 2017 to simulate in real life Peter Bosch taking over as Dortmund manager. And to be quite honest with you, until a couple of months ago, I did not know who Peter Bosch was. I knew he was Ajax manager and that he took over for Frank DeBoer after he left at the end of last season, but that was about it. Didn't know much about him either as a manager or as a player. It does look that he has been a manager at quite a number of places, Maccabi Tel Aviv, Vitesse, and Heracles before the Ajax. Job. So he has been around mostly in the Netherlands, and I feel that he's taking that Dutch style and going to try and integrate that into German football. And taking a look at some of his attributes, he does look to be an average to above average manager. 12s and 13s in some of those stable areas on the coaching side attack, defense, man management, mental, tactical, 13 there, that's always good. On the mental side, does look fairly competent, uh, like I said, average, with a 10 tactical knowledge there, 12 motivating, 12 level of discipline, 16 determination to go, that is very, very helpful as a manager. Going across the top, his preferred formation is a 4-1-2-3 DM wide, aka 4-3-3 essentially with inside forwards and a defensive mid, or as I like to call it, the V formation, because it looks like a V. He likes to play a direct style. His coaching style is more general. I guess that's kind of a balance. Uh, no leaning one way or the other. Playing mentality is attacking, which, going by the formation, is very understandable. Likes to close down on his pressing, and he likes to have a mixed marking style, which if you close down a lot, more often than not, it's going to be a man marking system. But we'll just have to wait and see how his style will fit within the German system and taking over one of the best German teams in the game today, you have to assume that Dortmund's success is not going to be strictly determined on the league. It's got to be the Pokal and the European competitions doing well there as well. So that being said, let's skip ahead a year to see how Peter Boge gets on as Dortmund manager and see what type of success that he brings to the club. So it's been just over a year since Peter Boge has been made Dortmund manager, the 24th of June, 2018. And let's take a look and see if he still is there. And in fact, he is. And not only that, but a couple of his coaching attributes have gone up by one. So he's definitely shown some development as a manager, but has that development translated into success with the club? Let's take a look and see how they fared on this past season. And looking at the Bundesliga, it looks like it already ticked over to the next season. So let's take a look back. 2017-18, and Dortmund finished in fourth place. That's not good. That's European spots, but it's Europa League, not the Champions League that Dortmund expects to get every single year. 63 points, well off the pace of Bayern, who had 88. Leverkusen in second, Schalke in third. Gladbach, the final European spots in fifth place. That's not good whatsoever. And that's already strike one against Peter Boge. I'm not quite sure that the board and the fans are happy about uh, Peter Boge not delivering in his first season. Let's take a look at the schedule and see how well he did in the other competitions. Like the DFB Pokal, and he only came in the second round. He got knocked out in the second round to Bayer Leverkusen on penalties. Yeah, they absolutely blasted Saar in the first round, but in the second round... Uh, Mark Bartra and Aubameyang getting a couple of goals there, but it looks like they lost 4-2 to two on penalties. Yeah, not going far in the, in the DFB Pokal at all is not a good look. Another bad time for Peter Boge and the boys in yellow. Let's take a look and see how well they did in the other competitions in uh, the Champions League. They made it out of their group, at least. They had a group of Rapid Vienna, Monaco, and Zenit. We're able to just get out of that, maybe in second place, but then going up against Manchester United in the first knockout round. And yes, they did, in fact, pull it back to 3-3 on aggregates, but Manchester United in that first leg getting three away goals, and that is how they get knocked out on away goals. So all in all, a very disappointing first year for Peter Boge, not going very far in the Pokal or the Champions League like they should have. And that is really going to put him in the doghouse in the second season. But before we get into that, let's take a look and see how he fared in the transfers. And this is what he's done over the last season. So he brought in 74 million pounds worth of players. And the first one that pops out is Omer Toprak from Leverkusen for 10 and a quarter million pounds. Lars Stindl 
Alex Vidal from Barcelona at 7 million pounds. Matthias Abramchik, is that a regen? It is, in fact, a regen striker from Augsburg. Iman Barkok from Frankfurt at 19 and a half million pounds. That is insane for a player, but at 20 years old, and he can only get a lot better than that. Yeah, I think that's about the right price for him. Jeff Hendrick from Burnley at 20 million pounds, though. That is pretty insane. The 26-year-old Irishman doing a fairly decent job for him over the last season. 15 appearances, two goals, and an assist. 692 average rating. I don't know if that justified 20 million pounds, though. And then finally, Fabian Brendlo, 2.1 million pounds from Fenerbahce. So those were all the ins. Were there any big names going out? And I see a lot on free, like Roman Weidenfeller is going out there. And then we get down to the people that were actually sold off. Patrick Fritsch to 1860 Munich for 1.2 million pounds. Uh, Nevin Subotic going to Stoke City, 3.3 million pounds. Uh, Pascal Stenzel going to Wolfsburg for just under 6 million. Eric Dern going to Augsburg for 2.7. Uh, a lot of loans, as you can see in here as well, like Emery Moore going out on loan to Werder Bremen. Mikel Marino on loan to Torino. So yeah, not a lot of talent that would have made the Dortmund first team I'm seeing. That's good in the short term, but for how much they paid on these players coming in to strengthen their side, which they did strengthen their side, but only coming in fourth place and not winning any of the cups, that is something that needs to be addressed. So we're going to go ahead into the second season and see if Peter Boge can turn this around with other transfers and can he win himself at least a Pokal, if not the league. So it's the 14th of June, 2019, just over two years since Peter Boge has been made Dortmund manager. Let's see how he's gotten on with them. And it looks like he's gone. He's been sacked as Dortmund manager. I can assume he's been sacked. I don't think he left of his own accord. And yes, it reads he's been sacked as Dortmund manager on April 6, 2019. He didn't even make it to the end of the second season. And it looks like that uh, he got knocked out in the Champions League, which can only tell me that Germany was able to get that fourth Champions League spot after the end of the last season. It just didn't register uh, on the table at that time. But they were knocked out of the Champions League by Spurs in the first knockout round. They got knocked out in the Pokal in the third round by Stuttgart. So already right there, two more strikes against him, not progressing far enough in a competition. Where did Dortmund end up in the league? And it looks like Dortmund ended up in third place I saw. I think I saw third place. I'm going to take a look at the playoffs. Yeah, Dortmund ended up in third place on 63 points, 13 off the pace of Bayern once again. Leverkusen coming in second again, Gladbach in fourth, Stuttgart in fifth, Schalke in sixth place. But yeah, that's once again another bad look by Dortmund, not doing well in any competitions. And that is why... Peter Bosch got the sack, and I assume the board just were not having it. They just did not have a very, very long fuse with that manager. So Peter Bosch is out. Hannes Wolf came in as new manager, saw out the rest of the season. But let's take a look and see how Dortmund did in the transfers. What did he do to try and strengthen this side before he got the sack? And Hakan Chalonogu is the first thing that I see, the first name that I see on this list, 22 and a half million pounds, bringing him in from Leverkusen. Uh, not a bad player. I'm going to say that right now. Hakan, not a bad player, especially on free kicks. He is a free kick master. Outside of that, Pascal Stenzel from Wolfsburg, Janis Moskal from Mainz, Mateo Kovacic from Real Madrid, 34 and a half million pounds. Overall, they spent 103 million. Uh, Zakaria Bakali from Valencia, Juan Pushman from Leverkusen, Matthew Ryan, Matty Ice from Valencia, goalkeeper for 9 million pounds, and overall he's not a bad goalkeeper. And then finally, uh, Silvano Stettino, Stettino from Bayern, 3.5 million. Is he a regen? He is a regen. And then taking a look at who they sold off, 58 million pounds going out. Is there any big names that I can see or big numbers? Lars Stindl, who they just brought in last year, sold off for five and a quarter. Christian Pulisic, they got rid of Christian Pulisic for just under 17 million pounds to Man City. Alexander Isaac is another big one. Two of their hot young prospects going out in the summer. Alexander Isaac going to Leverkusen for 23 million pounds. Going down, going down. Lucas Piszczek going to Panathinaikos. Sebastian Roda going to Bayer Leverkusen. Yeah, that's not a good look, especially with Pulisic and Isaac going. 
those are two guys that Dortmund need to build around in real life, really, because they're such hot prospects. And to sell them off, you're really selling off your future right there. It looks like Peter Bosch made so many mistakes on all fronts and competitions, transfer windows, formations, I'm sure. It just didn't seem to click. And that's what ultimately ended up costing him his job as Dortmund manager. So I don't really have anything else to say except I hope Peter Bosch does well as Dortmund manager in real life. And Dortmund fans, please leave in the comment box below what you thought about this experiment and do you think real life Peter can do better than his AI counterpart? And for everybody else, please leave your suggestions in the comment box below on what you want to see going forward on this channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the FM Scout YouTube page and also check out the FM Scout website. It's where I get all my graphics, the face packs, logo packs, kit packs, but it has much more than that. It has in-depth analysis about teams, formations, and players as a whole, and I highly recommend that you go and check out that website. But anyway, guys, this has been Gendo, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you very much for watching the video. Take care, and peace out.